Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you exactly why Magic Online will be replaced by this MTG Arena. Uh, answer, because uh, of money? So Hearthstone in 2016 made $400 million. I'm sure it made more money in 2017. Once it's gotten into the greedy model, I'm not going to talk about that greedy model yet. But the reason that Hearthstone is doing so well is pe because people like Brian Kibler, at one time the most famous Magic player, I mean you might argue, but he's gotta be top two, has left Magic the Gathering, left the community to do Hearthstone, because he gets 10 times more views, hundreds of times more interaction in that community. And it is a very strong community. Like they have very strong streamers. I would say that their Hearthstone streamers are get on average a thousand times more views than the most popular Magic streamer. And Hearthstone itself at the high levels way outpaces Magic the Gathering Pro Tours in terms of how many people are viewing the streams. Now with more streamers, that means more money, which means more promotion, which means more money. So at the end of the day, there is no question in my mind that Hearthstone is going to force Magic the Gathering to have a different model. Now model, we called it Magic Digital Next. Now it's called MTG Arena. MTG Arena, I'm, it's not a popular opinion to say, okay, Magic Online is going to die because a lot of people have invested thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on if they're a bot, into Magic Online. I get it. People are scared, but that doesn't mean that scared people are giving good advice that we should continue to invest in Magic Online. I, at one time, when the Legacy came out, Eternal Masters were in a dual land, Power 9, I was like, yeah, okay, this is going to be legit. These cards are very liquid. I can sell them anytime to this robot right here and I can get out. Well, it turns out it's not that easy. The Magic Online is quite interesting in terms of its interface. As someone who designs apps and websites and makes this type of stuff, it has one of the ugliest user interfaces, interfaces I've ever seen. And I've seen some really ugly ones. It has one of the worst user experiences I've ever seen. And I've seen very bad ones. Hearthstone, on the other hand, is very easy to understand. A person can view what's going on and not be confused. What's, you know, the problem with streaming magic is if, unless you know magic, there's no way you understand what's happening. Like you cannot read the small cards in a print. You cannot understand the, it's a complicated game and that doesn't make it bad but it makes it harder to display to someone who doesn't know what's going on. League of Legends, it's really un easy to understand what's going on. In Hearthstone, it's really easy to understand what's going on. And the commentators in those two areas are very good. They're professional commentators, not just like random people who were pros, right? I mean, I think they do a good job, but when you compare it to League of Legends, uh, Overwatch or something like that, those are people from broadcasting with years of broadcasting experience, learning esports, and then applying that. For Magic the Gathering, it's more like these people don't have broadcasting experience, they just have a lot of knowledge about the game, and sometimes it's hard to convey the knowledge to a lay person who may never have played Magic, but is now interested. The best way to drive interest in Magic is to have content, have people out there, like Brian Kibler, promote you create content and be happy about it. Content creator makes money. The Wizard of Coast receives free promotion and everyone is just in money, in bags of money, right? I do not see Magic Online surviving Magic Arena. I know people are saying, oh, well, the more serious people will play Magic Online still and Magic Arena will be for the more casuals. If there's anything I know and taking Puka Trade as an example, the casuals draw in the sharks that are the more professional players, right? So the professional players, they want to win. They want to win. So it's like your FNM. Your FNM might be super casual a year ago, but then that one dude 
is making it like it's an arms race. Now he makes it super not casual and it's competitive now because he's winning all the time. That is what happens to every f and I've been to. Even the super casual ones, as soon as like there comes a point where it's just one dude who's really competitive, he's like, wait a second, I can win f and promos all the time here. I can finish first place and get this prize support from all these people playing like, you know, allies. He is going to go to your f and every single time. So I don't see the argument where the super competitive players all stay together and then the super casual players are all having a good time. That is never what happens in real life. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen in any video game. The super competitive players, or at least some of them, will go off to play casual because then they can beat the casual players and feel really good about themselves. Unfortunately, that's the truth. So I don't see us having two different platforms. I just don't see it. And as soon as... Okay, here's what's going to happen. As soon as the shift moves to MTG Arena... The development on Magic, the development developers of Magic Online are already, already pretty pretty bad. There's no, they're really bad. In my opinion, they are so bad they deserve to be fired a long time ago because they literally know what the mistakes are and they cannot fix it or they choose not to fix it, and the mistakes keeps going on and on and on. And I get it; it's complicated. I understand that it takes you know a lot of hard work to make programs like Magic Online. But my gosh, if it's a $400 million program, you should be able to hire, let's say $400 million, we take $200 million and every developer costs 100,000. They could get 2,000 developers, full-time developers for $100,000. The money is going somewhere else. Clearly the money is going somewhere else, right? For Magic Online. MTG Arena, if it fails, Magic is screwed. I'm just gonna say it outright. MTG Arena cannot fail. The CEO of Wizards of the Coast uh, is this guy who's from Microsoft. This is his first big venture. At If he had to sacrifice everything to make sure that it's successful to show his investors he knows what he's doing, he will sacrifice everything. And the first thing to go, in my opinion, is Magic Online. Again, not popular opinion because a lot of you have spent thousands of dollars on Magic Online. And this obviously is goes against your personal interest to make for me to make this video. I have sold out of Magic Online. I have broken even and I'm happy I'm out because I cannot see a scenario where we have two different platforms. Like why would anyone play Magic Online when this platform is superior and has better UI and UX? Oh, they're more competitive. Well, no, the competitive players are going to go to your local casual f and and dominate you. That's just the nature of Magic the Gathering. Like A lot of things in real life would be illogical, but in Magic the Gathering, it just happens time and time again. Is No matter how fun or casual your locals are, somebody's going to want to win that first prize. And eventually it won't be casual because all the competitive players are coming in. Like really, you think all the competitive players are going to compete against themselves and then segment themselves in Magic Online while all the casual fun players are going to make their ally decks and play Magic Arena? No, the competitive players are going to want to win. And the competitive players are going to want to stream it. That's where the money is. The money is not in, oh, prize support. The prize support have always been really bad on Magic Online. No, if they have a platform where they can stream it and they can get donations and Patreon money, that's where the competitive players are going to go. And that is the salvation of Magic. Not, not, MTG Arena is not bad for Magic. It is only good because it will allow more players to make money and more players making money will make more content and the content will draw more people who don't play Magic right now, and that's going to be a, a feedback mechanic, which is very positive. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.